So since July 2019, the Summer Science Exhibition, this team's been really busy. We've been measuring uh, the properties of the magnetic field from rocks from all over the world and of all ages. And we've been bringing all that together, all that information to tell us about how the deep interior of the earth where magnetic field is generated, how that's been evolving over the last billion years. Okay, so we're just finishing off at site BM7 here. There are our hand samples. There is Simon. There is Lee. The pass that we walked through took about 20 minutes. Somewhere through those trees is our truck. So we really hope that these rocks are going to give us some good results because they've taken about two and a half hours of bush bashing 4x4 off-roading and then yeah a bit of a thirsty walk at the end to get and now we have to go all the way back so we've made some very exciting discoveries that hopefully you'll get to uh, read about in the news soon and uh, while the pandemic has caused us uh, some problems to our research uh, I'm really excited about what we're going to achieve in the next 12 months. Since the Summer Science Exhibition last year, I've been on field work to Germany and Canada to sample rocks of around 400 million years old to find out what the Earth's magnetic field looked like at that time. And now that the results are in, we are starting to think that the Earth's magnetic field of that time was radically different from the field that we have today. So before the summer exhibition last year, I had spent several months working in Western Australia on rocks that are 2.6 billion years old. I've since been able to come back and analyze the data. And I've now got an idea of what the strength of the Earth's magnetic field was like during this time. And I'm about to publish the results. Since the last exhibition, I've spent quite a bit of time in the lab to measure and analyze all the samples that I've collected for my PhD. Samples like this one, this part of my collection from Canada. So these samples that I've measured are almost 600 million years old, and now that they are analyzed, we know that they recorded a geomagnetic field that was at least an order of magnitude weaker than what it is today. I can't wait to see what our modelers can do with that data. It has been great for me to meet so many people interested in our stand and in our science at the exhibition last year. Since then, I continue working on computer simulations to explain the puzzling behavior we observe for the Earth magnetic field back in time. The simulations describe the convective motions occurring in the liquid outer core of the Earth where the magnetic field is generated. And in the last year, I discovered computer simulations that closely agree with the absurd magnetic field behavior for the last 10 million years. I have been working to understand how Earth's magnetic field changes in shape and strength over million year timescales and what those changes imply about the structure of our planet. Over the last year, I developed new models to describe the magnetic field using observations from rocks and computer simulations. And looking forward, I intend on applying these models to understand how changes in the magnetic field may have affected the evolution of life over half a billion years ago. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Grapponi, and I'm in the final few months of my PhD. Since last year's summer exhibition, my research has actually come quite a long way. I finished a project on the magnetism of rocks from near Edinburgh, Scotland, where I got to dunk them in liquid nitrogen repeatedly to demagnetize them. The magnetometer I was working on officially works now, which is great. So once life returns to its new normal, I'll be able to use the magnetometer to support the rest of the laboratory's research and keep pushing science forward. Hi everyone. Uh, this last year I have mainly been working on writing up my very first paper. Uh, this paper is about the magnetic field at St. Helena uh, about 10 million years ago. And my results show that the field at that island was actually quite irregular at that time, uh, which shows that the South Atlantic anomaly that we see today is not just a recent feature, but that in the South Atlantic region, the magnetic field was irregular for at least about 10 million years. Uh, this is very interesting and luckily other people thought so too because uh, last week our paper was accepted. 